Welcome to Bump Set Chat, the podcast where volleyball professionals come on and share their stories, experiences, and advice. And today, Jalen Reyes, assistant coach and recruiting coordinator for the University of Nebraska. Welcome to Bump Set Chat, a podcast for volleyball professionals, coaches, and players to come on and share their stories, experiences, and advice. And today, I'm super excited. I have a associate head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Jalen Reyes. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Barry. Yeah, so glad you're able to take the time. I really appreciate it. So the way we th- start things off, we do three random questions. Are you ready? Go for it. All right. So what was the last TV show or movie you watched? Last TV show I watched was Law & Order SVU last night. All right, there we go. Second question, what's the best thing about Nebraska? The best thing about Nebraska, the people. All right, and final question. So when you go back to the islands – what is that one meal you can't wait to get home for and have? Oh, uh, man, that's tough. I would say my mom's shoyu chicken mm-hmm. for all the Hawaiians out there. You guys will know what I'm talking about. And kind of a local style, kind of local Japanese style, Asian style cuisine called this. It's a family style restaurant called Side Street Inn. Okay. And if you've ever been to Hawaii, I definitely recommend. But I would say Side Street and my mom's shoyu chicken are the two things. All right. So, you know, since I started this podcast now, I got Hawaiians have been taking over the show. You know, I've had Capono Fay on. I've had your friend Micah, Micah Christensen. And then the other day I just had um, Hawkus from the Hawaiian team. Spiros. Yeah. He just, All yeah. Right. So it's like, it's you know, even though he's Greek, he's still, you know, part of that oh, yeah, no. island you culture. In Hawaii, you will give you, we'll give you your island card. <laughs> Excellent. So that, which leads me into, so, you know, when Micah was on, he suggest at the end of the podcast, every, I ask every guest to suggest somebody in his circle and he called out you. So how did you end up meeting Micah? Wow. Micah and I, we grew up together. Our, our dads are actually really good buddies. They're golf buddies. Okay. So I, growing up, I, I played a bunch of different sports. My dad was the assistant coach at the University of Hawaii. So when Mike Wilton was the head coach, my dad. So it was from 92, the year I was born, to my junior year of high school. Wow. So by the time I was like an eighth grader, I, you know, kind of decided I want to play volleyball. I want to play college volleyball. And if I'm being honest, I always... I always thought my dad had the coolest job ever. So I always wanted to play college volleyball, maybe play a couple years of pro and then get into coaching. So I'm kind of doing what I wanted to do since I was little, but I went to a school. I actually went to an all boys Catholic school called St. Louis back in the day. It was where Marcus Mariota, Tua Tagovailoa for all you football fans out there, they went to that school. So of course I played football. And if you ever meet me in person, I do not look like a football player. <laughs> and I was, believe it or not, I was smaller back then. And, I ended up picking up volleyball and I ended up transferring schools. And the school that I ended up going to commitment schools is where Micah went to. Uh, I was a grade older than him, but we kind of, we played against each other a little in club. And then it was kind of the year I went to started going to the same school as him, him and I even started playing club together. So we just kind of became year round teammates, I guess, in volleyball and him and I just like, we, 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 we had similar interests. We liked sports. We're members of Outrigger Canoe Club. If you talk to anybody that's kind of been to Outrigger, that's where we played club. So we'd always go down there and play beach volleyball and go to the beach together. And obviously we'd see each other in school. So yeah. I'm not really sure exactly where we met each other, but I, it was on the volleyball court. And then when I ended up transferring schools, we became high school and club teammates. So oh, nice. him and I have been kind of been, but you know, kind of best buds since I would say probably freshman, sophomore year of high yeah. school. Now, are you a Mavericks fan like him? I'm a Laker fan, uh, and, okay. I, and, and for the record, Micah, Micah was a Mavericks fan even when I when I remember. And Mike, if I'm being honest, I, I watched a little bit of the podcast. Micah was a younger; he was probably a better basketball player. Yeah, and he won. I want to say he won state basketball player of the year two times, maybe three. Like he was really a really really good basketball player. He was one. Well, he was big, right? He's six yeah. five, so that's really big. And then he could. He could dribble and shoot and pass with both hands. If everyone sees him play volleyball, he oh, can wow. kind of turn and hit it with his left hand. Um, he could dribble, shoot. If you ever watch him throw a football, Micah actually throws it. Probably He would probably pick to throw it with his left hand. Oh, wow. So that actually made him a pretty gifted, skilled basketball player. And then the fact that he was 6'5 and had pretty bo- good body control. He was probably, I don't know if he would agree, but I would think when he, at a younger age, he was, he was by far the best basketball player versus in volleyball in Hawaii 
we grew up in a in a time where there were so many really good world class volleyball players, and a lot of a lot of them probably a lot of volleyball fans know a lot of the names like the Shogis or the McKibbins yeah. or the Crabs or I mean those are the kids we all grew up with. So Mike Michael was obviously gifted and as gifted as those guys, but it wasn't as much of a gap in my opinion compared to how much better he was ever in everybody than basketball. But it was funny. I would say by the time he was a sophomore or junior, maybe basketball kind of became his second sport. Yeah. You maybe check with him on that, but definitely when he started playing volleyball, like especially with the USA teams, that's when he kind of became the volleyball player. Yeah. If that makes sense. Very cool. All right. So, um, you know, so Nebraska, you guys had a good season. What was your thoughts on uh, how everything turned out? I mean, it was a great season. If I'm being honest, uh, we'll start at the end. You know, obviously we wish we won one more match, you know, and congrats to Texas. They, they beat, you know, Stanford, Wisconsin, Nebraska, you know, seeded the top three teams toward yeah. the end of the year. So, I mean, they they earned it for sure. And they had some struggles starting the season in the middle. But, you know, congrats to Coach Elliott and all the, and their staff and their players. I mean, they did a phenomenal job. And, I mean, they, they took it to us big time. And they took it to Wisconsin even in the Final Four. And, yeah. you know, they had to survive the Sweet 16. And they kind of they kind of took care of Stanford, Wisconsin, and us all in a row in a matter of, you know, about a week. So, you know, congrats to those guys. But for us with a young team, you know, no seniors relied oh, really? on a lot of freshmen. Yeah, we had no seniors this year. We had some – so we had no one graduate. We kind of – we returned pretty much the, the the top seven or eight players that all played for us. But, you know, relying on a lot of freshmen, sophomores, and, you know, obviously very skilled. A lot of them have a lot of international experience. So it wasn't like, oh, we're bringing some kids off the street that have right. never played high-level volleyball before. But – you know, the way the things that they had to kind of overcome throughout the season and, you know, from the outside, not a lot of people get to see all that because it's yep. not, you know, they just see the wins and losses, but they don't see the day to day. Yeah. And then, you know, going through the Big Ten almost unscathed. Obviously, we kind of had a we ran into a really good team, obviously, in Wisconsin on Black Friday, who was our first loss of the season. But, you know, went on a great run in the tournament. I mean, beat a lot of really good teams. Missouri was a really good team. Georgia Tech was a good team. Arkansas, man, they kind of were the. The team that came out of nowhere to a degree, especially to the maybe to the regular volleyball fan that didn't really follow those guys. You know, obviously Pitt's been a team that's been in the Final Four many years now in a row. So being able to get there, get to the Final Four was a big deal for us. I think yeah. Final Fours are tough to get to, especially when you host, just because there's a lot of pressure on that yeah. regional final. But yeah, I mean, just going through a Big Ten season and, you know, almost undefeated, one loss. If you told me we'd had one loss in the regular season with this, with this team, and yeah. not because of the talent, just because of – it's really hard to, it's really hard to win. It's, I mean, honestly, it's not as easy as pe a lot of people think. And, you know, just, just to be able to do that every night and be able to bring enough to win three sets by two points, as my boss likes to say. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then I think one of the highlights of the year was, was our stadium match doing something that has honestly never been done before, right. you know, playing in front of 92,000 people in a football stadium to play volleyball. Please. It's, I mean, I, I have goals one day, hopefully to coach in the Olympics. That'd be kind of one of my dreams and be a head coach someday. And yeah. I, I don't know if an in, one single match will ever be able to take to match what I felt that day. Yeah. Just because it was so, it was so awesome. And it was so awesome in like so many different facets in terms of what we were doing for women's sports mm -hmm. and our current team and the university's support and and just one the community and the fan support to make that happen and i mean we we canceled school for volleyball on a wednesday <laughs> you know like what like I mean, yeah, and ninety thousand people showed team. up on a wednesday yeah. night i mean it was sold out and just obviously the world record and the media attention that came with it before it, it felt like i mean if i'm being honest there was more there was more media and hype going into that match than the final four Yep. in terms of just like the media obligations that coach and the players had to handle. And I mean, it was from the national anthem with the flyover, yes. you know, and it's uh, a volleyball game. It, it, I mean, yeah, you just kind of sit there and I've seen pictures. There's a picture of me, Kelly Hunter, our other assistant and coach cook. We're out on the, t we're out on the stage during the match. And then someone took a picture of us and it's just like, you get the backdrop in the background. You kind of have the sunset, in the background and you know you just have the lights but it's the football stadium right you know it's like i, I don't know i i just i don't think anything will ever sure well 
hopefully, you know, I, you know, of course, later that year, we played in some pretty important matches after yeah. that. You know, I like to think, you know, we'll be in some important matches this coming fall. Hopefully, you know, hopefully our, co- my coaching career can take me to some other successful teams that will end up in some important matches. You know, hopefully I have some goals to coach internationally someday, but I don't know if anything will ever top that because one, it's, we were the first ones to do it. And yeah. it was the first time. And I was, you know, I was lucky to be a small part of it. So, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of awesome things that happened this, this, this season. That was one of them. The run we went on big 10 champions is, is not, not an easy, yep. not an easy thing to accomplish. Getting to final four is, I don't think, you know, there's a reason why it seems like the same teams are in the final four. It's hard to do. Yeah. And you know, it's just, you know, we just wish we were one match better at the end, but again, Hey, we lost to a team that was, that was definitely better than us and better than everybody at the end of the year. Yeah. So congratulations to them. But all in all, I thought it was a great season for the yeah. Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah. Like, like you said, you know, no seniors, you guys had the one, one loss and to, you know, show up every night and undefeated at home. What, you know, yeah. What a, what a great year. Yeah. I mean, not, no complaints. Yep. Just, you know, wish we were one match better. And yeah. that's, but I think there's a lot of teams that could say that too, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, you know, going to that, you know, that big night of volleyball, you know, you had, everything had to be perfect. You know, you couldn't have any condensation, the weather, the, you know, possibility of snow. It just, you guys had the perfect night for it. I mean, it was, it was crazy because the week before, I want to say it was almost in the hundreds and it was windy. And then the week after, I can't remember exactly the weather, but it wasn't perfect weather. And by all means, Barry, it wasn't the wind. There was a little bit of a breeze that day. Yeah. That that definitely, if you play if you play beach volleyball and indoor volleyball, you know, like there's a difference. There was the wind was a factor a yeah. little bit, but I mean, in terms of that, like it wasn't that much of a factor. Where I don't know if this, if I'm just gonna admit it, for me, it was about it was about the production. It was about the moment. It yeah. wasn't the volleyball game. Like almost took. To a degree, it almost took a back row seat compared to what else, all these other things that were going on. And I mean, from the the drone show to the fireworks show after to a country, I don't know if we have country (laughs) music fans in here, um, but a country concert after, I mean, it was, again, I don't think there would be, you know, I think someone's probably going to try to replicate it. I bet Nebraska maybe down the road does something like this again, but it's, I'm just so lucky and so fortunate to be a part of the first time this has ever happened in the United States. I know yeah. it's I know it's happened in Brazil before they played in, vol- in a in a soccer stadium, but to be the first one here, you know, and to be a part of a, a program that's like, you know, one of our sayings here in Nebraska is dream big. Yeah. You know, and when we first had this idea, I think not a lot of people, you know, we thought we'd get 30, 40,000. Right. Not 92, you yeah. know, I mean. Within three days, I think we sold eight over eighty thousand tickets, and then, wow. I mean, everybody started looking at the, what's the attendance records on these? Like, yeah. can we, you know, I think we knew we were going to take our attendance record back, in terms of that. But it, like, I mean, if I'm being honest, around the office, we were like, okay, we'll get the attendance record, but we're like, come on, let's get maybe forty five thousand, maybe fifty. Yeah. And I even had some friends that are, come on, sixty. Nobody, none of us were going to say ninety thousand. I mean, nice. the, one, the stadium. The stadium only seats 65, 60, I think it's like 67,000 or something like that. Yeah. So we didn't even think of where could you put people, obviously the field, because you're playing a volleyball game. Right, but yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was incredible. Yeah. And it was one of those things where I'm so fortunate to be a part of, and it was, you know, it was a, it was almost like a four or five day thing where yeah. it's not just, oh, you show up and play a game. It was a total production starting on that kind of Monday morning. I mean, it started before that, but that Monday morning was kind of where, where, where you could really feel like, wow, this is real. When you see the stage and you see the court being put up and you see them setting up a stage on the other side for the country concert, you're like, wow, this is, (laughs) this is going down in Lincoln, Nebraska, you know? Excellent. And now, you know, did you guys get to do any practice practices in the, in, in that environment or really the game was, First time no, we... everyone, all the teams got a practice the day before. Oh, okay. So all four teams, the other two teams were, it was Wayne State and Nebraska Kearney. Yeah. And we played University of Nebraska Omaha. We all got to practice the day before and we all had a, like a, an hour of servant pass the yep. morning. So, okay. but I mean, it, you know, so, I mean, it wasn't the first time, but you know, I mean, 
it, you know, and the other thing is it wasn't like we served a pastor practice in front of 93,000 right. people, yeah. you know? So we're used to playing in front of big crowds, if I'm being honest in Nebraska, but that was, that was a little, I think it took a, all of us a little bit to like get into, okay, we're, it's just another game now. Right. Like once the first couple of points, it, yeah. I mean, I think human nature, even no matter how hard you fought it, it was still like, wow, you know? Yeah. Because you guys are all there. You you guys are the rock stars. You guys are the NFL pros that are on the field, and everybody's you know everybody's eyes are on it you. Was, it was crazy. Yep. It was crazy. Absolutely. And now you know, was there any anybody thinking about doing a skyball serve at all? Uh, no, honestly, we like messed with it. We were messing with it, but I think I don't know if there was like an unwritten agreement for no one to do it. <laughs> but it was not really. If I'm being honest, yeah. I think. I think one, the girls were just so ner- like our girls were so nervous. Yeah. The nice part is a lot of our girls played beach volleyball the spring before. Okay. So they could kind of understand what we're talking about. You know, hey, let's keep the ball away from this side of the court because of the wind. It was just like beach we talked about. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of a really, really, it was really helpful for yeah. us. But I don't think any of them were gonna w- be willing to try it. <laughs> if I'm being yeah. honest. Uh, None of our girls grew up playing beach, so it's yeah. not like, oh, they have the sky ball in their bag. Right. You know? Yep. Okay. All right. That so, would have been interesting, though, if yeah. they tried that. Just a, a, like that an ESPN highlight or something. You know? Yeah, like... that would have been pretty interesting. <laughs> oh. All right. So now let's go, you know, going back to your roots of volleyball, you know, what was the hook it had on you that, you know, like, this is my sport? Yeah, I, I, I actually got hurt playing football when okay. I was a seventh grader, eighth grader, eighth grader. I actually had a pretty bad, like pretty bad hip injury. And I always kind of said my dad never wanted me to play volleyball because he never wanted to coach me. And I think he, he didn't want to spend more time around volleyball because he was a, <laughs> he was a college coach. Yeah. So I think he just tried to push me to other sports. And I think when he got, when I got hurt, it was kind of, there was a club in Hawaii that asked my dad if I wanted to play. And I was always around the sport, but yep. I never really played. Like I would pepper, I could go and mess around with my dad's players. I could kind of jump and hit a little bit. I could set a little bit, but I never actually played on a team. So it was, what was it? Going into my freshman year, I played. And after that, it was like, I gave up everything else and I wanted to play volleyball. Yeah. And everything, like, I mean, that was it. I went to my first nationals. It was in Minneapolis. And after that, it was, I just want to play volleyball. Nice. And want to play volleyball. So, I mean, I guess that's the hooks it had on me is once I kind of gave it a go, I was all in and I, I decided I, I looking back on it, I wish I didn't maybe give up some other sports yeah. that young, but like for me, it's kind of hard to look back and say, I regret it because, you know, I had the goal of wanting to play division one volleyball, which I got to do. And yeah. I had the goal of playing for a really good club team, which, which we, I got to do. And I wanted to kind of coach division one volleyball after that. And I'm, you know, getting to kind of live that dream every yeah. day. So do I have no regrets? No, but I wish, I wish I maybe got to play a couple other sports in high school. And that was obviously all yeah. me deciding, <laughs> but I just felt like, Hey, I wanted to spend as much time as I want, as much time as I had around the sport of volleyball. Yeah. And now, you know, speaking of, you know, playing division one, you, you ended up going to BYU. What made you pick BYU? Well, I actually, I actually went to Cal state Northridge first. Oh, okay. So I went there out of high school and I did some USA stuff with Taylor Sander. So it, it was just the way it worked out. They had a kid that was that was my position transfer out kind of in the fall or in the spring of our freshman year. And so it just kind of worked out where I ended up just wanting to transfer. And I transferred to BYU and kind of got connected with Taylor and Josue Rivera, who was the other outside when I was there. He's from Puerto Rico. And, okay. And us three kind of became like kind of brothers. They're probably, you know, along with Micah, they're probably kind of my two other closest volleyball friends for sure. Yeah kind of you know my two boys in college and just kind of ended up there part of the reason too is and not a lot of people know this BYU so Carl McGowan started the volleyball program at BYU Carl McGowan was gone to endless Olympics with the men's national team and there's a lot of coaches that all played at BYU so Hugh McCutcheon played at BYU everyone knows who Hugh McCutcheon is Kevin Hambly is the head coach of Stanford women's volleyball he's a BYU guy um, Lucas Slabe, who's at NC State, he played at BYU. Rob Nielsen, who's at who's at Utah State. Obviously, the Olmsteads at BYU. Both Sean, who was my first boss when I started coaching, he played at BYU. I can list off Rob oh, wow. Browning at St. Mary's. 
I can list off a lot of coaches and sorry guys, sorry Cougs if I forgot any of you guys, but <laughs> there's so many of them out there. Um, Jason Watson, who took Arkansas to the Elite Eight this year, and you know he was at Arizona State. He he was a BYU guy. So there's a like BYU kind of had this what is that called? This kind of reputation for like kind of producing coaches. Yeah. You know, not, not a lot of people know this. Marv Dumphy got his master's at BYU. Uh, Troy Tanner spent time at BYU. There's a lot of people that kind of came through BYU. So I just thought, okay. okay, obviously the program is really good. Taylor Sander was kind of the real deal, especially when we were in high school and he still is the real deal. I love you, Tay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just, it, it was just kind of the perfect storm. And if I'm being a hundred percent honest and anyone that's been around men's volleyball knows like, we don't get full scholarships and liberos right. definitely kind of don't get any money. So honestly, compared to like paying out of state tuition in California or some of the private schools like USC or Pepperdine in California, BYU is pretty affordable. It was either go to BYU or go to Hawaii. And yeah. you know, so it was, I'm, if I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like a little bit was cost yeah. too. It's just BYU is a, more affordable, even though, you know, I'm not Mormon and, yeah. but I just, I, you know, I just, the volleyball program and it was just, I grew up in Hawaii where volleyball is a big deal. And I went to a game there and they played in front of, you know, a packed Smithfield house and everything. Anyone that's been there, especially for a men's match, like that, that atmosphere is awesome with the students right on top of you and stuff yeah. like that. And it's just a really, really cool, intimate old cracker box gym that has a lot of volleyball history that I think even opposing players really enjoy yeah. playing there. You know, you're, you're on BYU television. So you're playing on TV, which is, you know, not the norm for a men's volleyball team, right. you know, and it was just, they had, it was just like timing worked out great. I had a bunch of buddies that went there. There was a couple guys from Hawaii that were there too, that kind of helped like recruit me. It was kind of nice seeing somebody that I looked like there, yeah. you know, and just, I think the, the trajectory that I wanted to go on being on a, at a great school, you know, be on a great volleyball team. And we were pretty good while we were there. And you know, and be able to kind of forge my way into coaching. I didn't know what it would look like when yeah. obviously when I was picking that school, but you know, if I could do it all over again, knowing what I know, I wouldn't change a thing. Nice. So I'm happy to be a BYU Cougar for sure. Excellent. Yeah. I had a, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was Taylor Hammond or Hudson Bates when they were on, they were talking about the uh, men's scholarship, men's volleyball scholarships. There's four and that's four and a half, four and a four half. And a half. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I want to say four and a half men's volleyball coaches. You can, I think that hasn't changed. I hope it hasn't gone down, but I know it's four and a half and you can d divide it up however right. much you want. That's wild. But it's, it's crazy. You know, at, and with women's volleyball, you're working with 12 full yeah. rides. So it's yep. crazy that, you know, five of my players here at Nebraska have more scholarship money than 20 of our guys did at BYU combined. Yeah, it's you know? wild. So it's, it's a different different side of the coin definitely yeah. what depending on the gender you're you're coaching yeah and now you know looking back you know from the recruiting side the recruiting the way things were recruiting back when you were young when you were going through that versus how you recruit today has a lot changed or is it sort of you know a lot of the similarities yeah no i think a lot of it's changed for sure college sports have changed yes. you know and if if you just turn on espn you'll see it changing by the minute now yeah. uh, when i came over to the women's side it was, it was like recruit super young. I mean, I was recruiting, you could offer eighth graders back when I first got wow. here. Yeah. It's crazy. N now you can't until they're after their sophomore year, Yeah, but it's still younger versus in the guys. I know there's your outliers here or there, but it's, it was so hard because you don't <clears throat> one, you don't have as much scholarships, yeah. right? So, you know, it's, it's cleaner to recruit in women's because it's like, okay, if I give this player a full ride, starting in this year, I've, I just count four years. I know I'll get that scholarship back then. Uh, okay. Yeah. In men's, it's like, you might give, you might give somebody 20% their freshman and sophomore year and then oh 40. Goodness. And then, so like you can kind of maneuver it how you want. Yeah. Uh, so it's harder to calculate that because you might have a kid on your team that's worth more because he just really developed. So you just give him a little more. Yeah. You kind of have to, there, it was a different game. I remember. It, 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 put it this way: coaching women, it's really, it's way easier to keep track of. Yeah. Versus the men's, it's all kind of percentages and you need a math expert like that. there. Exactly. And <laughs> some schools, some schools on the men's side, if you're, let's just say, yeah, some schools are in state, out of state, and those are different percentages. Yeah. BYU is Mormon, not Mormon, so you're kind of doing. Oh, shoes, yeah. It, it's every school has kind of a different, yeah, different like process they need, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then. I would say, and then just men's, and I would, when I was there, the men's were a little bit 
older because sometimes guys just come to the game older. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, even I had the dream of playing in the NBA one day, that dream, thank gosh, was nipped (laughs) in the bud pretty early for me. But there's some kids that uh, I remember recruiting and they're sophomores, juniors, and they're just, you could see raw talent and physicality, but they're just not groomed as a volleyball player yet because it's like volleyball is kind of their second sport. And it's not until maybe they don't get the offers they want playing basketball that they realize like, huh, I can be a top notch volleyball player or just kind of be a so, so basketball player. Right. So it's something you kind of have to wait for those kids too, because sometimes they show up to the sport That's a little true. later. And then, and then I think you probably, it sounds like you follow the men's game a little more. You had Spiros on, then you're also recruiting foreigners, right? Yes. So like the foreigners in general, the foreigners in men's, I think have more of effect than even in the women's side. So if you look at like the all American teams for the, like for the men, ABCA all Americans for the men yeah. versus the women's, I'm not saying there's not that many foreigners in women's volleyball that reach that level. But yeah. if you count like how many are actually American in the women's versus the men some year, I mean, shoot. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I would be interested to go back to when Nikolov was a freshman, freshman of the year, national player of the year, right? You had Hawkus, Nucleus from Hawaii, Tilla, Gardini from BYU. I think Gabby Garcia Fernandez was still at, maybe he was gone by then, but you know what I mean? Like, yep. like there's more foreign flavor that at the top in men's volleyball. And you kind of have to wait for those guys because when they're freshmen, they're thinking, you know, they're, they're in the, their national team pipelines and they're, nice. they're like, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to go play for Lube and Perugia or Zenit with Micah at 18 years old. I'm not going to American school, yeah. you know? So like by the time it kind of weighs itself out, then they come over, you know, but you kind of have to, you, they're not, they're not like, I'm going to go to a tournament this weekend. I'm going to go watch 14, 15 years old. And I know they're all going to play college volleyball one day. Right. Versus I fly over and go recruit the under, under 17 European championships. And the Italian team has girls that half of them would be college all Americans right then. Yeah. That's how gnarly they are. And great volleyball players too. Some of like, Maybe one of them will come and play. And the ones that we kind of really want, they're all getting the big contracts to yeah. stay in Italy. So that's that's the difference in, I would say, the men's and the women's. Yeah, because I noticed on your, like, your roster, it's all Americans. versus We don't, we don't have one foreigner on our team. Right, yeah. You know, I look is, at Hawaii. For the and men's there's... roster, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you can yeah. thank Milan Zarkovic for that one. But <laughs> yeah. uh, And I love, I love Milan Zarkovic. And then uh, I'm trying to think who, out of the top men's teams, this year and I'm, i've been following a little i think is ucla kind of the only top one that doesn't have a like out of their top eight yeah. nine guys i know ucla has like 15 great players on yeah. their team this year but they have like six outside you yeah. know they're playing one of them they're probably playing one of the better ones at libero this year which is crazy to me but <laughs> yeah it's like every every other team has like a couple of great foreigners i was watching yeah. long beach they have two or three of them you know and obviously gcu's got them BYU historically has a few, you know, so yeah. just, and obviously, yeah, like Hawaii, Hawaii obviously has a bunch, you yeah. know, and yeah, but, but you, yeah, you, you in, women's vo- great- in women's volleyball, it's not like that. Texas, yeah, Texas on their top group, they don't, they didn't have any, Pitt had a girl from Puerto Rico as an outside hitter. Louisville had an opposite from Jamaica. I'm trying to think who else, who, Wisconsin, Wisconsin had a girl from Turkey, a girl from Poland, a girl from Canada. So they, they were probably the most foreign flavored yeah. team out of the top eight teams. But in men's volleyball, it's like, to a degree, you can't really compete unless you have a couple of them, right, you know? Yeah. So, and and you bring uh, up a good point because I don't even, I never even thought about that as like the, the volleyball players here, they're basketball primarily first until they switch out. Yes. And then the the Europe, athletes. they're playing volleyball first. Yes. Yes. At that, and I would say, even in the United States now, I would. The, I would say this. I'm not saying the athlete that's pl- the the female athlete in the United States that's playing volleyball is better than basketball. I don't want to make that. I don't yeah. want to upset any of the basketball <laughs> viewers out here. But I would say this. Even in my short time in women's volleyball, the overall the athleticism is getting better. Yep. And one thing I notice is I look around and there's a former NFL guy there. There's an NBA guy there. There's a lot of former like one percentile athletes and their daughters or their nieces or their grandkids yep. or their granddaughters, they're playing volleyball, yep. you know? So I just think the gene pool of volleyball is getting better and the kids are getting bigger. They're getting faster. They're getting stronger. I, I understand that that happens in every sport yep. throughout 
but it's there's been a significant jump in terms of that, you know, and I think that's why to a degree, I feel like, a, and a lot more kids are playing volleyball, especially on the girls' side. Yeah. But I feel like to a degree, that's kind of why a lot of us maybe don't feel the need to, because there's so many good American right. players now. And, you know, up here in New England, where I live, um, you know, I moved from Canada. Boys are playing volleyball in Canada, middle school and on. Here in New England, it's rare to find a high school yes. team running. Yes. So it's right. volleyball just doesn't rank it. And, and where girls, right. girls are playing it from middle school on. Right, right. I would bet in your guy's neck of the woods, it's obviously basketball. There's going to be some football players. Lacrosse, I bet it's pretty yeah. big. Hockey, yeah. I would bet those are kind of where yeah. – lacro- I, I know hockey players and volleyball players probably don't overlap too much, but yeah. I would bet they lose great – like look, a great lacrosse athlete could be a, probably a pretty good volleyball player depending on the size Bryce, yep. of them, you know, and obviously, you know, depending on the size of a football player and obviously basketball players right. probably are the most – Compatible, you know, usually yeah. give me you – know, if I was a men's – but when I was coaching men's, it was, let's go find kids that look like they're basketball players. Yep. Like those are the guys you want on yep. your team. You want the guys where their, their sweatpants are too short and you see their socks yes. because they didn't, they didn't get the Nike tall. They got the <laughs> Nike large, but not the large tall. Right. Those are the kids you want on. Those are the kids I, I'd always be walking around the convention center looking for it. Yeah. I want the long lanky kid that just decided, Hey, I'm going to try this volleyball thing and yep. not do the NBA. And and then to add on to the skill level of women's volleyball, girls volleyball getting up, you like you see more, you know, you you see the jump float serves, but now you're seeing hard down balls, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, jump serves. That that you just you, you just see better volleyball from all over the place. Yep. I mean, it's I mean, I can think of I mean, obviously any big city in Texas cuz they have so many kids that play down there. Kansas City is pumping with talent. In, state of Indiana is awesome. Chicago, obviously Southern California, Atlanta, Florida, the Florida, I mean, kind of that Fort Lauderdale north kind of to Jupiter to down to Miami. And then Orlando has a, Orlando to Tampa. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy how much, how much talent. And I mean, there's great talent in the state of Colorado. There's great talent in Northern California. I'm trying to think other places. I, I mean, it's even from small, I mean, one year here in Nebraska, I want to say in the 2021 class out of the top, you know, recruiting ranking yeah. out of the top 50 players, like eight of them were from the eight of them were from Lincoln and Omaha, oh, wow. which you think about it is like insane. But like, that's how much like there's talent everywhere right. in women's volleyball. The DC area has a really good club. That's c- cranking out a lot of kids. Yeah. The state of Missouri is awesome. Obviously the Kansas city part. And then kind of that St. Louis area. I'm trying to think any other big hotbeds of all. Phoenix, the yep. Phoenix area has a really good, and then, you know, San Diego, I mean, San Diego itself, right? San Diego itself, San Diego, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, even the state of Austin. I mean, the city of Austin, Atlanta, you could like recruit like one of those cities and probably have enough talent to <laughs> like get to the sweet 16. Yeah. If you just could only recruit kids from that area and got the best kid. Yeah. Dallas. I mean, any of the ones in Texas, you could win the national championship. Yeah. You know, but it's like they have so much talent in those areas that, you know, you could just recruit an area and be good enough to be a tournament team if yeah. you get the right kids, obviously. That's but, wild. you know, it's, it's volleyball is so big now in women's and yeah. there's so many tournaments. I know there's a tournament in Kansas City this weekend called Triple Crown, which is the one that everyone's going to go to. But there's one in Vegas. There's Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. There's one. I believe there's one in somewhere in Florida, a three step one. I know there's one in Texas. It's like all over the place, yeah. you know, and just these massive tournaments where there's hundreds of courts in these convention centers. I had and- no idea it was that my, so my daughter's playing club for the first time and we're heading up to Boston in a couple of weeks. Good just, luck. Just like you said, Good luck. it's a hundred course. Like, Holy cow. I had no idea. Well, I'll see you. I'll see you on the road a lot then my friend, because <laughs> you're going to, it's, it's the life of in club for women's and men's is so different. Oh, is men's, it really? I think, Growing up in Hawaii, we didn't go to a lot of qualifiers because it's just expensive and it's far for us to get to. Yeah. I think I played in – growing up now from playing from 13 to 18, I think I went to qualifiers twice. Yeah. I'm going to go to three qualifiers in this, in March <laughs> recruiting. It's crazy. Like I'm going to go watch more qualifiers in one month than I played growing up. Yeah. And I played since I was young, but that's just – that's just men's volleyball. That's the difference between yep. men's and girls' volleyball. And I, 
that's just it, it's not bad or it, one's not better or the other. It's just different. You yeah, know? it's just the pop more sport is just more popular. You know, volleyball, yeah. women's volleyball is just so much more popular than you know where men's volleyball is, which is too bad because I I think it's one of the best sports out there. Yes, I would agree too. Yeah, and now you know, sort of going back to your BYU days, what are some of the highlights you have? What are some you know good memories from that you know that era? Oh, highlights. I'm one, honestly, the, the thing I always remember the most. So we, w- we went to a couple final fours. We were pretty good. Um, I had some really gifted teammates, Taylor Sander, one of them, Ben Patch. If you follow the men's national team, I play with Ben a little bit too. I, I mean, honestly, it was just like the guys. Yeah. We just had such a really cool group of teammates and just, just guys that were like just all time great dudes, you know, yeah. and just like, the times on the road or the times in the locker room messing around or yeah. like the chit chat during practice. I mean, yeah, I remember some of the games you remember going to the final four and you remember, Hey, this great comeback win. But like, you remember, I remember all these other times more than I do the game. Yeah. So I would say just the guys yeah. going to the final fours are awesome. I mean, what else? I mean, getting to compete against, you know, I mean, just like top tier. It's yeah, top tier level. Like going anytime I went back home and played in front of the Stan Sheriff Center was cool because I grew up in that building because yeah. my dad coached there. So those were awesome. Playing at Pauley Pavilion, where it's kind of hollow ground for a volleyball player, kind of like playing at Madison Square Garden for a basketball player. Poly, playing at Pauley Pavilion is like that, especially if you play men's volleyball. Yeah, I, I remember honestly. Like I remember. We were number one in the country my junior year. We lost at Santa Barbara in Rob Gym. And if you've ever been to Santa Barbara, if you ever been to Rob Gym, it's 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 crazy. I mean, the students, let's just say they have a couple of adult refreshments and they show up like five points in to make a scene to everyone. And it was it was so like we here's the funniest part. We lost the game and they stormed the court. You know, like you don't really get that in men's volleyball. Yeah. You know, and it was kind of it was like one of those were bummed, but you're like, wow, I'll never forget that where yeah. you know you just have all these students just like storming the court you're trying to shake the other team's hand and they're storming <laughs> the court and people are pulling us off the court to get us away from all the fans it yeah. was i mean i remember all these kind of like different things you know yeah. we had a couple of cool comebacks what else happened i mean uh, the other thing too is like getting to <laughs> compete against a lot of my friends yeah i remember you know like getting to compete against micah christensen when he played for usc getting to compete against taylor crab against long beach um playing a lot of my friends when we play hawaii yeah. that all went to Hawaii. You know, I have a lot of buddies that, that kind of went all over the country playing against a couple of friends that, that I played club with that went to Stanford, you yeah. know, and we'd play them a lot. And it, 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 it was always weird. It, 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 we, we never, BYU's in the MPSF still, but back in the old MPSF when we were all together, like that conference was like SEC football. Like you could oh, be okay. eighth in the league. You could be eighth in the league and still beat the number one team. And it wouldn't be even a shock to anybody that they – that a number eight MPSF team beat the number one team. Like it, would, it wouldn't even be a surprise yeah. at all. I mean, it's happened. I was part of those teams that lost, you know, it seemed, you know, there was always like, it seemed like we, we, we would, even though we never played in the Miva, it seemed like I played Loyola and Lewis like a million times in my career. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I feel so familiar with like that part of Chicago <laughs> on the lake and then Romeoville. And you would think like, but it was like every year we played them sometimes. And then sometimes we, we go to Hawaii and play in the Outrigger tournament and play Lewis there, you yeah. know? So it was like, you know, it was like, I see Dan Friend all over the place, <laughs> you know? And that's another really good all-time guy, by the way. But I don't, I just miss, I, like, that's one thing I miss is just kind of, the, I, I was kind of call it like a fraternity, like yep. the fraternity of men's volleyball, because it's just, there's so little schools, there's so little opportunity, there's so few people that get to enjoy it. So when yep. you come on this... When you come on the girls' side and you run into other people that have either played or coached somewhere, you kind of have this, like, connection of, like, oh, yeah, I was at BYU from 2012 to, you know, and so then, of course, they know somebody, and right. then next you know, we get down this rabbit <laughs> hole, and I'm, like, an hour away. I'm an hour. I'm still on this court an yeah. hour later talking to this one guy <laughs> that I just met because he played at, you know, he played at Carthage, and he knew this guy, right. you know, so uh, it's a cool – It's a re- that's honestly one of the, like – I love recruiting, but I just love connecting with people. And yeah. um, one of the, you know, like people that I got like a lot of time I connect with is people that have all been in kind of the men's volleyball game. Yeah. I'll talk to Kevin Hambly and he'll tell me his stories about when he was at BYU and stuff like that. And he was teammates with Hugh McCutcheon or 
I'll run into Lucas Slave and he'll talk to me about being teammates in the early 2000s with Rob Nielsen and Carlos Moreno and, yeah. you know, and Sean Olmstead because we all work together at BYU. So it was, it's, it's just, it's a really cool, like really, really cool environment when you yeah. get to play. Cause it's, I just feel like when you're on that side, the big schools need the little schools. Yeah. You know, so even if you go to a UCLA or a Stanford or Long Beach or Hawaii, you need the smaller schools because yeah. it's, there's not a lot of us. Right. You know? Exactly. And yeah. I remember, I mean, I was, I was a, player yeah i was a player when pacific dropped their program and i was a coach when cal baptist dropped their program and it's you know and obviously like you know thank gosh stanford ended up not dropping theirs but yeah like you you kind of go through this and it's like even though they were you competed against those guys it's like it hurt me when you hear about that because it's like there's so few of you and it's sport you know and it's like even though i went to you know byu it's like Hey, we are all Cal Baptist fans that day, or we are all Pacific right. fans that day, or you know, we are all like Stanford. What are you doing? You know, yeah. that day, you know, and but yeah, no, I mean, it just some awesome times on yeah. that side for sure. Yeah, I had a UConn senior on, and and she, you know, you were talking about the locker room, and that was her thing. She she you know loved the locker room. She's going to miss the locker room because you'll never get that experience down the road. Even if you go pro, the locker room in a pro locker room is different than the college locker room. You know, you're all playing together. You're not playing for money, positions, and things like that. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I also played too when, when there wasn't as much transferring as there is nowadays, yeah. you know? And so, I mean, it was like, you're going to be there for four years, you yeah. know? And in pro, it's like, I mean, in pro, I know with the transfer windows, like we could still be playing Champions League, but I know I'm going to, like, I want to say, like, when, when Leon won his last game at Zenit, when they beat Micah and Lube, Micah Taylor, I believe Reed Pretty was on that team, when they beat them, like, everyone knew it was his last game at Kazan before he was going to Italy, oh, which is a weird concept. Right. You know, like, you think about, like, hey, I'm going to play my last game at this school, but I know I'm going to, you know, that doesn't really happen. No. You know, so it's, it's just different, you yeah. know, and I think in college you get that little more of you know, obviously we're all, we're all bonding through school yes. too. It's like half of it is you go in there and you're talking about <laughs> this professor, this class, or, you know, this test too. Yeah. So it's kind of um, one or, you know, for us, for us, warm weather people in, in Utah, it was like, oh, the cold, the snow, it's snowing, you know? So it was, yeah, I, 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 I never had the opportunity to play pro. I kind of went into coaching, yeah. but I could imagine it's, it's a little just different because of, you have that business exactly. factor to it of, yeah. hey, yeah, like maybe there's three or four players that are on multi-year contracts. And then if you're yeah. not, you're almost kind of playing to, you know, up your stock yep. or get re-signed or, you know, yeah. maybe earn a contract somewhere else. So there's always kind of that business in the back versus in yep. college. It's a little more, you know. You're there. It's, it's not. Yeah, exactly. You're there. And then when you're a senior, you kind of know it's your last time, yep. you know. Exactly. So. Yeah. And then, you know, after the BYU days, you know, what, what got you into coaching? You know, you're, 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 it's in your family, it's in your blood to coach. What made you want to jump into coaching? I think my dad. Yeah, for sure. And then it, it was just like lucky how it happened. I, I graduated and then Chris McGowan stepped down. So they moved Sean over from the women's team to the men's team. And then with the staff shuffle, there was a spot open. And kind of reached out to Sean and interviewed for it while I was still trying to play. Yeah. And I just kind of had a thing of like, if I got to, if I got to start coaching now and I knew we were going to be pretty good, um, you know, those next couple of years at BYU, you know, maybe I can kind of jumpstart this coaching career. And I mean, never did I think in three years I'd end up in Nebraska, but yeah, I mean, it it ended up being a good decision, but you know, if you ask anybody that actually knows me, like, like I still miss playing. I wish I gave it a shot. Yeah. But I would not, again, not knowing what I know, I wouldn't change anything. Nice. And now, you know, how much of an adjustment was it coming from coaching the men's side? Now you're coaching the women's side. Total. I yeah. mean, different for sure. I think just just coaching. You know, your your the schedule is different. You're playing yeah. in the fall. I and mean, there's so many different things. The rules of the game with subs, the way recruiting works, the way. And then just how much bigger the sport is, like yep. 
recruiting recruiting for men's it's like you go to like a tournament in chicago a tournament in the upper east and you go to a tournament in southern california you pretty much see everybody yeah like women's it's like you're all over the place which and we're all you all also have the more resources too from the women's program yeah. versus the men's program from what i understand yes you're not wrong there so it's just it's it's bigger yeah uh, there's a little I don't know. And men's because there's no full ride, like to a degree there's, I mean, you can give someone a full ride, but obviously that's over one fourth of your team, but right. there's, there's a, there's a little less like maneuvering of players. It's kind of like everyone's kind of beat, like you're kind of there. Yeah. In women's nowadays, it's kind of like, if you're not playing, you can kind of, tra- it's kind of not as, not as similar to basketball and football, but it's way more similar to that than men's volleyball is. Yeah. So you have that piece to it. Um, yeah. Just, you know, you know, if I'm being honest, like a lot of the being a young male coaching females versus coaching males, there's not a bad thing, but a challenge of it on its own. Sometimes, Absolutely. you know, that you have to be aware of yep. if you're me and, uh, you know, so you have that aspect of it and, and then you're, you know, then of course, it's not like I started coaching women at any program. I right. started coaching it at Nebraska where it was like, you're in the spotlight, you're expected to win. My first year here was a little like we started off pretty rough. We ended up getting to the finals, which was awesome and playing a great Stanford team. But yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, you're playing in the big 10 where it was like kind of reminded me of the old NPSF where, Hey, team number seven is pretty good. And right. like, if you don't, you don't bring your stuff, you're going to lose three yeah. zero and you're on the plane in an hour and a half. You know, I mean, it just, it just the lifestyle is different. You're yeah. chartering flights. You don't, you know, you're playing on a Wednesday on TV, fly back, girls go to school on Thursday, Friday night, maybe fly out because you're playing somebody. It's it just the, the lifestyle's different in yeah. terms of how much more time you're on the road, but not on the road because yeah. of certain things. But at the end of the day, it's still volleyball. And right. I really enjoy the sport of volleyball and, and the games are different, you know, and I think I, I see like we're changing rules and one's trying to make one like the other. And it's like, for me, I'm just like, Hey, I love the boys when they go back there and bang their serves as hard as they can. And like, that's the beauty of that sport versus in women's like the great defender rally. The rally. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. Yeah. That's the beauty of that sport too. Like two degree, like they don't have to be like each other just because, just because they're both called volleyball. They don't have to be like each other. They're different, you know? And that's for me, it's, I think that's what that's like, that's like the beauty of them, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. And that's what, to a degree, one can learn from the other yep. versus if you make them the same, it's like, I feel like you water down both of them, yeah. you know, to try. And I don't know, people are like, ah, well, people watch men's volleyball more if there was more rally. I'm like, yeah, maybe, but maybe not. At what like, cost, you know? too? Is what, right. what cost exactly. to the well, game? You, yeah, you're going to make the boys less athletic. You're not going to let them jump and fly in front of the service line or the ten foot line, right? Like, no. or you know what I mean? Or because that's what makes know. men's volleyball so like that yes. flying, that skying, the power. Like yes. my daughter doesn't like to watch the men's game because it's she prefers watching the girls play. And I was like, you know, there's moments that you know the girls, the yeah. rallies are amazing. You know, they go out for a minute. That power you see from the men's game is just like that serve comes over. For me, that's that's the beauty of the men's game, right? right? Is is that is yes. that's the difference in the game. It's about once you get the ball, you better kill it because the other team is going to. Yes. Versus in women's, it's a little more. You know, yeah. it's kind of if you can't kill it, you can strategically put it in a place sometimes. Yep. You know, and but it's funny though when you get to a higher level, and I'd like to think our program is it's more like the men's game where when you're trying to beat the Wisconsin's, the Texas's, the Stanford's, the Pitt's, the Louisville's, the Minnesota's, the, yeah. you know, the great teams, you SC, UCLA's, like you have to kill the ball or else they're going to kill it, you yeah. know? So it's uh, I almost feel like I'm living in both at yeah. the same time to a degree, gotcha. probably more closer to the women's side, but still miss yeah. and still appreciate obviously the side of my first side, if that yeah. makes sense. So. And now over the years since you've been coaching, have there been any big changes you've noticed from how the, you know, how you approach it, the coaching styles or anything like that yet? No, I mean, I, I feel like I'm learning. I feel yeah. like I'm learning. I'm learning from coach cook, which is awesome. You know, I'm upbeat, high energy, Yeah. you know, love to ki- catch the kids doing it right. Person we will get on them if, if we're not meeting the standard, but at the same time, like I love coaching and I love, I love catching the kids doing it right. Yeah. You know, and 
you know, I love giving feedback. I love giving constructive, positive feedback. And sometimes it's stuff they don't want to hear, but right. it's like, Hey, this is, Hey, this is what we need to do. Exactly. But you know, I feel like, I feel like the one big thing I've learned is like, you have to be able to edit your approach depending on the player, the person, or even the team. Yeah. You know, and every year is not the same team. Like even, even though Nebraska, we bring back a lot of our same players, it's not the same team as last year. Yeah. Because a Harper Murray, a Merritt Beast and Alexa Rodriguez, they're different players than they were. And then of course we're bringing in some new players too. So it's a different squad than they were a year ago, even though the name like Husker fans would be like, Oh, it's the same names to a degree. But you've got that year experience on that player and this yes. player and, and how much one has grown over the other is, is how you're going to approach them differently too. Yes. So what has been sort of more of the challenging things, you know, trying to, you know, be a, a coach in volleyball, you know? Challenges. I mean, just, I think one, just adjusting to the times of like, NIL transfer portal college sports yeah you know and like seeing you know conference realignment we're going to start you know we're this year we're going to go to Washington and Oregon and the LA schools are coming here and that's going to be a big 10 game you know like think about that you know so I think those are challenges and I just think just just the world right the generation of kids we're coaching and I kind of like to say I'm still kind of their generation but it's just it's not how it was when I was playing and it's not how it was 10 years before I was playing you know it's just it's different. And yep. for me, like, that's also part of the fun is like, you, you can't just stay the same because if you stay the same, you'll just get, you'll just fall behind. So yeah, absolutely. And I, think, I, I, I think that's the biggest thing for me, the game for sure. Like there's obviously if you watch volleyball 10 years ago, there's, there's, oh. especially if you watch like the international game, especially if you watch the men's international game, it's like, I mean, they don't even look like they're playing the same sport. Right. That even when we won the Olympics in 2008, it's like, we're playing different sport nowadays. Yep. And I think even those guys would admit that, that are playing at that level. Yeah. But I mean, it, for me in college sports, it's just what's going on with the, with the kids. Like what is going on in, in an 18 year old college athlete's day yep. is different than it was, it was 10, 100%. 15 years ago. Yeah. And for me, that's the biggest two degree passing is still passing. Serving is still serving. Sure. There's different ways you can do it now. Yeah. Passing. I think there's a lot of similarities like 10 years ago. You still want to do the same things, obviously running an offense, obviously middle blocker routes are different, but like the biggest thing is like, what's going on. Honestly, what's going on in their lives outside of the three hours or two hours they spend in volleyball is the biggest challenge. Yeah. In my opinion. And then you, and then you add the social media aspect to a volleyball program too. Yeah. You've that's got, like now the number one be, thing. You know, you've got to be that's a, the number one thing. Yeah. You know, because you've got to make sure your program is that you're putting stuff out there, content out there to, you know, to be everywhere. Right? And, you know, because yes. no kid wants to go to that school is like that has no presence. Like, you know. <coughs> right. hundred yeah. percent. So Transfer Portal. I had no idea how crazy Transfer Portal was. I had uh, Jake Baru from Michigan State on. And when we were talking, he was like, I, you know, I'm checking this portal every, you know, because you don't know oh, what's every, going on. It's wild. It's, it's- well, especially in the windows when the windows open, you ha- like you check it. Yeah. You check it like four or five times a day. Sometimes it's crazy. Yeah. That's just, that's just, that's just the way it is nowadays. And it's, it's just different, you know, yeah. and people are willing to make changes and it's, it's accessible. It's easy. Is it good or bad? I'm not going to answer that. Cause yeah. I like it's for me, it's, it's a gray area. There's, there's times where kids should make a change and there's times where you feel maybe like you should stick you know, it out. Maybe you should stick it out. But like, you know, it's, you know, then you could say like, well, like coaches can leave and go where they want Yeah, pretty easily to a degree. I mean, I, I can see it from both sides, yep. you know, and it's just, it's just at the end of the day, it is what it is and it's here to stay and you could fight it. You could hate on it, but like, you're not going to change no. that to a degree. No. You could, you could, you could, you could make a stand of, oh, we're not going to recruit any kids out of the portal, but like, okay, well, I just think it's very, it's hard to do that nowadays, yeah. you know? And there's some, it's crazy. Like I was talking to another coach in a different sport here at Nebraska. They're literally referring to other like schools as a, Oh, that's a portal job. Oh, that's a That's a job you can recruit out of high school. Oh, that's another portal job. Like essentially a job where you have to recruit, you just recruit kids out of the portal. Yeah. It's crazy to me. It's just different. It's, right. Because it's, it's, it's eye opening. This wasn't a volleyball coach, but it's just yeah one of those, one of those things you're like, wow, you know? And I'll, you know, it's definitely a, it's a sport where obviously the two other sports that are really, really involved with that, one of those coaches, but they were, they were explaining this to me. It's just like eye opening, And that's, 
for me, for me is like one of the biggest challenges for college coaches is like how this whole landscape is changing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause as, as a, you know, somebody who's out there recruiting a kid, you put so much time effort selling them on, on coming to the school. And then maybe after the first you know, half of the year, like I, I, I don't want to be here. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and then that's, that's, you know, in two degrees, like the kids have that right too. And yeah, yeah it's just, it, for me, it's, it's, if I'm being honest and this is only, this is my personal opinion, it's just here to stay and yeah. you just learn, okay, how do I adjust? What can I learn from it as a coach going in, Yeah, you know, and what can I learn from maybe it to prevent it from, from happening next time mm -hmm. to you, Hey, do you have some contingency plans or how, how quickly do you adjust, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And I think there's, there's, it's important for both sides to make sure, yep. you know, you have plans and stuff like that. Absolutely. And now, you know, another thing that you were talking about, or, you know, you're talking about getting used to the whole college landscape and now you have, you know, analytics is becoming, a, having a bigger role in volleyball, whether it's, you know, making sure the load management is done, you know, ball flight data, things like that. How do you guys are, you know, how do you guys approach analytics? Yeah. I mean, it's funny. We're actually hiring another, our, our tech coordinator, our data volley person actually got a coaching job at UNLV. So we're, we're actually hiring somebody. We're actually going to bring somebody in next. We're bringing people in next week for interviews, but yeah, we're, you know, we, we use a lot of the analytics. We have our, we have our own, our own, I shouldn't say our own lab because other sports use it here in Nebraska, but we have a lab called the NAPL lab where we measure, you know, we get arm swing mechanics, we get jumping, you know, force plate stuff. It's the newer version of my bird. It's like soccer players use it. Catapult, yeah. catapult, you know, they use catapult. So, you know, I mean, we have jump data coach monitors, jumps, workload, you yeah. know, stuff like that. I mean, a lot of that is monitored by, I mean, we have a support staff besides the coaches that kind of help monitor all that kind of stuff. So all that stuff is super, super important. Again, you know, trying to keep track of, of course, the load that they, they have during practice, but also just, again, the 21 other hours of the day. Yeah. Cause we all know like sometimes that you could do great work for three hours, but you can undo it in those other hours you're away from the gym, you know? Yeah. So, so for us is like educating and making sure they understand like recovery is important and yeah. sleep is important and making sure nutrition is important. So, you know, there's a lot of people that are all here to make sure our athletes at Nebraska are, you know, doing the things they can be great outside of just, Hey, becoming a better passer or a better yeah. server. Yeah. And, and you, you know, you bring up a, a good point there about, you know, the training and making sure they're, they're healthy load, balancing their loads and whatnot, you know, as a fall sport, you know, one of the disadvantages I see as, as a fall sport, especially for volleyball, you have 17 days to get game ready. And that's, that's not a, uh, an easy thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. My boss has been like fighting the fight. We should have summer access. It doesn't make sense. Basketball has summer access when they start after us and soccer and we don't and we start football i think football starts before us but we always play our first game before football yeah and i'm not going to sit here and especially on nebraska i'm not going to sit here and compare ourselves and fight with the football team because we know how that's going to go no matter what school you're at but yeah. um i don't know I, I it is it is crazy that you don't get that but i i understand to degree of just managing the load and like allowing them still to be kids. Yes. If that makes sense, you yeah. know? And I think that's the balance that coaches are fighting to a degree is that we all would admit, Hey, this is good for them. Yeah. But then you sit there and we start scheduling all these things for them. And you're like, well, when do they have time to just do the important thing we just talked about in the beginning after we just, we all said this, but then we all just acted on, like they got to do this at nine at 10 o'clock. They have this, they have class from minute, you know, so enjoy college. Yeah. I, I mean, like, like I told you, like one of the big best things about my college was like the time with the guys, yes. you know, and like being one of the boys, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, I think that's one of those things that I would never like, like never forget, yep. you know, and all that. And, you know, do we work hard? Yeah. Do we get up early? Yeah. But at the same time, I think it was, you know, I think balance is super important. We're talking to some of our athletes currently about that. Is yep, absolutely. Making sure they have balance in all facets of their life. And, yep. you know, understanding that, hey, depending on the time of the year, maybe this this thing will take a little bit priority over this thing and then vice versa in this time of the year. But yep. 
you know, you don't want it to do that and then that, right. you know, no. that would not be good not if good. that makes sense. And yeah. so I think part of that is, is like making sure they have balance. Yeah. Um, so I, I can see the fight again. I can see both sides of, you know, but because then if you give kids summer access, then, then it's like, you know, then to a degree, some schools maybe doesn't, they don't pay for summer school. So how can you make the kids be there when they're not getting paid to be yeah. there versus some schools can. So then, then it comes down to, you know, you kind of let the rich win again, you know, yep. kind of a thing. So Absolutely. I can understand to a degree of that, you know, yep. you know, at the same time we say that's like not a lot of time, but you're like, if I'm being honest, so I think that's a good amount of time. If I'm yep. being honest to play. I mean, I know when I played men's, there's some years where a couple of teams would get back on Christmas E or like Chris, like the 26th yeah. practice, 27, 28, go to Canada and play in the Can-Am thing, you know? So they practice for two days and it's right, like, yeah, they're fine. You know, so it's like, for me, it's like, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I just, hey, this is the time you got. Who's got, who can be the most efficient yep. with their time? Everybody's under know? the and, same umbrella. And, yes. Yep. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of my attitude on yep. it, you know? All right. Cool. All right. Hey, well, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on and do this. Uh, before you go, though, uh, like past guests, like what Micah did to you, who in your volleyball circle, you know, players, coaches, past past players you played with would you recommend a shout out to get on for sure i think i we'll just keep the hawaiian train going all right you know, i know what micah went micah went coaching i'll go beach volleyball we'll get taylor crab the taylor crab on all right and i mean that guy was unreal he was another guy where probably a better vault probably a better basketball player really? until he might even still say he's a better basketball player. I don't know. You should ask him that. All right. right. We'll get him on. Um, yeah. She had T, T crabs on. I know he's him and my other guy, Taylor Sander, are kind of making a big push for the Olympics this summer. And, you know, I lucky to see him. I haven't seen him in person in a while. I saw him Christmas time. We were back home together. And, yeah. And yeah, get Taylor crab. He's, he's one of the, like, if, if you, if you don't know who Taylor crab is, you guys should definitely watch him play volleyball. He's kind of a, kind of a savant, if I'm being honest, especially in the sand. No All one right. moves like him, obviously. Especially with the last name Crab. So <laughs> excellent. Uh, get Crabby on there. All right. Well, hey, you get thank Trevor you so on there too, but I get Taylor on there. Trevor would probably just make fun of everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, good luck this weekend and uh, you know, we'll catch you up soon. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, sir.